if you're a photographer and you're looking for a powerful professional alternative to Adobe's Lightroom, then stick around because we're going to check out the latest feature packed release of Darktable, the free and open source photography workflow suite that's available for Linux, Mac, and Windows right here on DS Tech Media. Howdy y'all, I'm Jay and this is DS Tech Media where we cover everything tech with a focus on Linux and open source software. So uh, Darktable has a new release, it's uh, Darktable version 3 and if you're not familiar with Darktable it's a non-destructive raw image developer, editor, and processor and an excellent alternative to Adobe Lightroom. It supports tons of raw formats, JPEGs, and allows you to adjust your photos and develop them down to the smallest details. Darktable is created for photographers by photographers having developers are also avid photographers as a part of the target audience it's good for understanding real world problems challenges workflows edits your images non-destructively all the way through the pipeline your original image is never modified professional color management features ensure fidelity all the way to print and GPU accelerated processing means you can speed up your workflow using your video card. Uh, so it's non-destructive, takes advantage of the real power of raw photos. So all the core functions operate on 4x32-bit floating point pixel buffers enabling SSE instructions for speed ups, GPU accelerated image processing, many image operations are lightning fast thanks to OpenCL support. Professional color management, it's fully color managed supporting automatic display profile detection on most systems including built in ICC profile support for sRGB, Adobe RGB, XYZ and linear RGB color spaces. Runs on Mac, Linux, Mac ports, BSD, Windows, Solaris 11, GNOME. Filtering and sorting. Darktable can import a variety of standard raw and high dynamic range image formats. JPEG, CR2, NEF, HDR, PFM, REF. Zero latency, zoomable interface, tethered shooting support. Here in news, it says Darktable 3.01 is released. I'm pretty sure I'm still using standard 3.0 at the moment. Features in the 3.0 release include an updated UI with new themes, colored and uncolored icons, the new calling Lightroom view, new RGB color profiles, there's more cameras supported uh, with new white balance and noise profiles, They've also added new modules and a search for the modules built in. There is a new filmic RGB module, a new tone equalizer based on the zone system by famous black and white photographer Ansel Adams, new RGB curve and levels, improved noise reduction, a new 3D loot module, reworked tagging, new raster mask and now it supports exporting to google photos which is very cool and if you did want to get darktable 3 they have choices for installation on ubuntu fedora OpenSUSE, arch linux gentoo red hat enterprise linux 6 centos 6 mac os debian solaris freebsd and of course windows and you can install from source and from git and all of that is available on the install page okay so here we are 
And as you can see, this is version 3.0. And I'm just going to cycle through the various themes here. So some have, you'll notice, colored icons and different fonts. And others do not. There's a combination of all of the variations. I prefer this one, dark table icons, the original dark theme, and the colored icons. And there are a ton of preferences now. I'm not going to go through them all. You can even adjust the CPU and OpenCL settings here. And I'm not going to demonstrate every module. I'm not a professional. So I wouldn't even be able to do it justice. But as you can see, it's broken up into the light table, the dark room, and the other. And in the other, we have a map that shows all of your photos with their geolocation data. There is a print dialog, a slideshow, and tethering if you have a camera with tethering support. This is the light table where you have your image overview and we have a zoomable light table. Basically you're able to move across and zoom into all of your images. There is the file manager mode which makes a fixed grid of images that you can increase or decrease the size of. And then there is the calling view, which lets you compare images in proximity side by side. Over here we have the image information, shows you the location of everything, the flags, the model of camera. I shot these on my Google Pixel XL. And by the way, I shot most of these in RAW originally with an app called ProShot. Over here, we have the option to take snapshots. We have our history of adjustments. We can manage duplicates and there's color picker. And we also have a mask manager for drawing, adding, and removing masks. And if we hit tab, our uh, toolbars go away. So here, let me adjust this back to the original. So this is the original image before any editing. Here it is with my most recent adjustments. There it is over sharpened. Uh, this bar shows all of your active modules. This would show your favorite modules. Uh, this is all your modules. Tone group, color group, corrections, and effects. And we have a image map over here for managing the view of the image and an adjustable histogram here where we can uh, manually adjust things up and down so this dragging this changes exposure dragging this will change your black point And you can favorite uh, individual modules and store presets for all, all of them. And we can adjust them with the slider. And by right clicking, we get this other representation of the levels. 
And at any time, we can go back to how the image was before. This is the new Loot 3D module, which I do not understand at all. I know that you load different uh, profiles into it. This is a uh, mask where you can apply your effects directly to a specific spot on the image and you can of course remove them or go back at any time. And these are uh, all the modules we've got. Watermark, framing, dithering, velvia, split toning, vignetting, soften, channel mixer, output color profile, color contrast, loot 3D, grain, high pass, low pass, sharpen, color correction, fill light, RGB curve, RGB levels, levels, tone curve, zone system, contrast, brightness, saturation, filmic RGB, that's a new module. Monochrome, low light vision, color zones, local contrast, contrast equalizer, shadows and highlights, global tone map, denoise, plume, color map and colorize, color balance, vibrancy, fringe, color lookup table, color reconstruction, basic adjustments, input color profile, haze removal, unbreak input profile, denoise bilateral filter, base curve, granulated density, tone equalizer, crop and rotate orientation, scale pixels, Rotate pixels, liquify, perspective correction, lens correction, retouch, spot removal, exposure, tone mapping, denoise, profiled, demosaic, raw denoise, hot pixels, chromatic aberrations, highlight reconstruction, white balance, invert, and raw black and white points. I've used this program many times and have not once tried every module available. But you can retouch photos to add amazing amounts of color and light to them. There's the original, and here is my edit of it. I think it looks much better that way. Also over here, we can manage our images with these tools here. We've got, we can create high dynamic ranges, make copies, rotate. We can copy them locally, resync local copies, group and ungroup. You can even refresh the EXIF data. You can edit the metadata, tagging, geotagging, and of course we can export selected. And with 3.0, they have added Google Photos, and they're going to send me an authorization code. And sign in with Google temporarily disabled for this app. This app has not been verified yet by Google in order to use Google Sign In. Not sure if this is just a temporary error or if I need to change something. I'm a little disappointed by this, I'm not going to lie. So I looked into the issue with the Google Photo Export and apparently they have changed their API. Judging from what I see in the GitHub issue page, it doesn't look like it's been fixed and it might not ever be fixed. So. I guess we'll have to see what happens with that. In the end, it's not the most important feature. It's just kind of a convenience, but I figured I would follow up on that. So there's the original, and that's with a little bit of sharpening. And this photo has a lot of changes to it. There's the original. And that's it greatly sharpened. I think right about there is probably where I would want it. That's a little too much. I think that's about just right. And this is the amount of detail that I was able to get with my over three year old Google Pixel.
when I took this photo, I was using this lens, which is full price, I think like 25 on Amazon. And I was using ProShot, as I said, which I will cover in another video. And I might quickly uh, display it in this video.